Hey guys and welcome to this new video. In this video, I want to show you a self-built alternative to the SwitchBot Hub. But first, let's go to the intro. Enjoy. Yes, I know this video may not interest everyone, but perhaps it is interesting enough for one or two people that it is still worth making. That's why I definitely want to do this. This is about the topic of SwitchBot. I made a video about it some time ago. I also use some of these devices myself and I bought them myself. For example, there is one at the front door. And for those who don't know SwitchBot, they are essentially just small devices that can simulate a button press. You can't just replace the button of a coffee machine, for example, with an Arduino or something like that. And to be able to make such things smart, there is SwitchBot. This little box presses the button and turns the coffee machine on and off, for example. In my case, I used it to control the hallway light. Because there is also a button there, but it cannot be easily automated. And it was possible for me to do it without major modifications. So in the end, it presses the light switch and that turns on the hallway light. I did the same with our front door because there too the problem is that you can't easily tap into it. And a SwitchBot is therefore a super affordable way to implement the whole thing automatically. The problem with these SwitchBot devices is that they operate via Bluetooth. This means that you still need some kind of hub or gateway to connect them to the internet. Of course, SwitchBot also offers its own solution for this, namely the SwitchBot Hub. It also includes an IR sensor so you could replace remote controls with it. And I thought that was pretty cool at first, so I contacted SwitchBot and asked them if they would be interested in making a video with me. Fortunately, they agreed and sent me the SwitchBot Hub 2021. However, I noticed that the SwitchBot Hub is actually not very practical for my intended use, as it only works through an API. That means you always access this hub over the internet to control devices remotely. Whether you use the app that directly interacts with the API or you build something yourself, which is what I have done. But for a local smart home with home assistant and so on, it's not really practical. You ideally want to avoid using the internet. And that reminded me of a solution I used a few months ago before I had this hub. And so I used an ESP. I programmed it in such a way that it can be controlled via MQTT and then communicates with the switch bot via Bluetooth. However, it didn't work quite as stably for me. Nevertheless, some people in the comments asked for the code and now someone has taken the time to implement it properly. That means I can simply link to someone else's code today, which works really well for me. In the meantime, there is even a beta version that allows you to integrate the devices into Home Assistant, provided you have incorporated MQTT into Home Assistant without needing to configure anything. So you just need to go into the Arduino software and I will show you how to set everything up now. So first of all, you obviously need to have an ESP and I'll include the link in the description below. You then connect it to your computer, go to the grid project, download it, open your Arduino IDE, and install all the additional libraries listed in the GitHub repository. Once you have done that, click on the arrow in the top left corner, and then the whole thing will be flashed onto the Arduino, and you will essentially have the first version on it. What you need to do now is edit the arrays, and you need to enter your Bluetooth address. Insert the Bluetooth MAC address of the respective SwitchBot that you want to use. You can actually find this out relatively easily. To do this, go to the SwitchBot app and you will see all the devices listed here. Click on a SwitchBot for example, I will take bot 11 here, then go to the three dots at the top and you will see the BLE Mac displayed. You need to write this down once and insert it into the respective array. So for example, the SwitchBot into the SwitchBot array. Then you enter your MQTT data. If you haven't set up MQTT, it's best to check the link above where I have already linked a video on how to create your own MQTT server. You will definitely need that for this. And then that's basically it. Now you connect the whole thing to the power. What you can do now is set passwords. I have done this for my SwitchBots because I don't want everyone to be able to control them remotely. But I used a custom password in the app for the SwitchBot and then inserted the name of the SwitchBot that I assigned myself along with the password into the password array. Now the ESP can control the SwitchBot. You should definitely test everything beforehand to ensure it works properly. Then you can attach the SwitchBot, plug the ESP into the power and that's basically it. Now if you have set everything up correctly, the SwitchBot should automatically appear in Home Assistant. If that is not the case, you can also restart Home Assistant. It should be accessible at the latest then, and if you have an iPhone and the Home app, for example. Once installed, it should then appear directly in the Home app. So now you have your SwitchBot not only in Home Assistant, but you can also control it directly with the Home app, which is not so easy to achieve out of the box. And because everything runs locally, it works significantly faster. So when you press the button, the SwitchBot starts almost instantly, which definitely provides a huge time advantage for my door automation. 
I will show you the remaining devices that I have already integrated via the ESP in the next video, but I will go into more detail about all the SwitchBot devices then. If you don't want to miss it, feel free to click subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give me a rating, and then I would say, see you again next week on Wednesday at o'clock. Until then, take care and goodbye. You send.